Hey, what's up everybody? Rob Marzullo here, Ram Studio Comics. Welcome back. And today's video is actually more me promoting a new brush pack that I got, so uh, that I created for you guys. So uh, if you're interested, it is going to be a paid uh, product. It'll be available in the description below. Uh, but I will be sure to make this very affordable for everybody. So, you know, check it out, see if it's something you want to try. And what this is, is a uh, comic book inking brushes. So everything I designed here is to make certain tasks and comic book inking easier to accomplish so starting off this is a uh, hairbrush that i've created it's got just a little bit of tapered edge it's got some uh, strands kind of loosely in the design so that basically you can quickly get the forms of hair down um you know with less effort so basically just you know use the uh, separation obviously you'll be working over a sketch uh, and then you scale the brush down real small and you get these loose little, uh, you know, flowing strands here and there. And I usually finish it off with a uh, another hard round brush or something. But then I do, you know, the lighter hairs throughout like that. So that's one of the brushes there. And this is a pack of 25. So it's got a lot of different brush options here. This is a detailing brush. So you're going to get more of like... You know, thick to thin. Uh, it's got a nice responsiveness to it. And, you know, you can do your feathered lines relatively easy with this one. Uh, it's got a little bit more of a rounded edge. So your your top portion of your lines are going to tend to be a little bit more rounded to the start. So that's a good detail brush. Uh, these ones are kind of fun. I made some cross hatching brushes. Uh, more for like effects and things. But I wanted to do a variety of cross hatching brushes that, you know, make it a little bit easier for people that, that struggle with uh, cross hatching. And that one's a bit thick and heavy. Uh, you notice it, it goes with the flow of uh, wherever the brush goes. So that can be helpful. And then I made a thinner one. Uh, like I said, that first one's kind of a little bit, you know, heavy to be cross hatching. Uh, this one's a little bit more um, effective for that. Uh, and yeah, and I also gave this one the uh, size dynamic as well. So the harder you press, the bigger it gets. The lighter you press, the smaller it gets. Uh, so that one can be real helpful for cross hatching. Then I also made a left and a right lean so that you can kind of develop your own effect with cross hatching. So I'll do a couple variations here real quick to show you what I'm talking about. So you just grab each other, uh, the two brushes that are next to one, uh, one another and just size them out at different intervals and see what effect you get so like that's kind of cool right there you know overlay them at different uh angles and things like that so some nice gradations some nice cross hatching and really quickly done horizontal fade brush this is more some of these are more like stamps but you know these do go uh, some of them go with the way that you pull so if you notice if i pull left to right i've got the thicker area that shades down and if I pull from right to left it goes up so again this kind of tracks your movement it's not perfect in the way that it lines up but it will go with the direction that you pull the brush so that can be helpful as well just you know a big time saver because if you've ever done that effect you know this is good for like backgrounds and stuff if you've ever done that effect it takes forever to sit there and sketch that all in uh, I call this one creepy horizon down and uh, I do this effect a lot in my comics. You can kind of just stamp this one, but it also goes with the, um, the direction of the pull as well. So you can hold shift on the keyboard and go straight across uh, pretty quickly. So that gives you a nice creepy kind of effect. Uh, creepy up and down. Forgive the names, I just uh, you know thought it was kind of funny. Um, so that one gives you a little bit of the up and down uh, pattern. So you can pick which way you want the the larger streaks to go down. Uh, let's see, this one's just straight up lines. I'll actually add another layer. And these are all made at pretty good quality, uh, high res and all that too, so you can size them up and down pretty good. Um, so this one's just straight lines, but the reason I did that, like if you pull it, you're not gonna get much of anything. But the reason why I did that is you could hold Alt, drag one over, and then rotate, and you can kind of make some of your own cross hatching effects. So if you get in there and see, it's, it makes a pretty clean uh, cross hatch effect that way as well. So that's more of a stamp. 
Uh, like I said, some of these are just stamps, but uh, they should still come in really handy. This one I like a lot, Spike Brush. Um, I could actually see using this in my work quite a bit. Um, I'll add another layer so I can move these around if I have to. So basically this one goes with the direction of the pull. It blends really nicely. It also has uh, thick to thin or you know size ratio based on the pressure if you're using it. Keep in mind you got to use a tablet for that to happen. You're not going to get that with the mouse just so you know. Um, but the beauty of this one, say you're doing like a shoulder piece or something um, and you're trying to shade inward from the shadow of the shoulder or like off the side of this for instance. Um, it's just real easy to pull that and get that effect relatively quickly. Um, and then, you know, you still have to probably go back and erase parts. And, you know, if you're trying to connect two pieces, you're going to have to play with it a bit and work with your layers. It's not going to be perfect. It's not going to take away all the work that's required, but it's going to simplify the process. Um, this is another good one where I use this a lot for like backgrounds. So I'll like do the stippling effect. And if you've ever done this, you know it takes a little bit of time, not a tremendous amount of time. You can grab a, a micron tip pen and uh, do it relatively quickly. Um, but it's it's just really fast with this brush. I tried to blend the edges where it softly goes into the, the next piece without being too noticeable. Uh, you just have to make sure that you press down and kind of carry through the whole way through. And then try not to overlap too much because it will show the overlap if you're right over top of the brush. But pretty effective brush there as well. Uh, this is like one of my favorites. I'll be using this a lot. You'll see this in my, in my work. I'm pretty, uh, pretty pleased with this one. So basically this is like Kirby Crackle and it just works really well. Like at first it looks just kind of like eh, just a bunch of blobs of ink you know, or whatever. Uh, but then you keep sizing it up and down, give it some variation. And then you come back with white, you hit X on the keyboard come back with white so you see it start to take a little bit more effect right there and then I even created uh, a brush that goes with it that gives you those little uh, you'll see people various artists do this effect as well where it's kind of these little shaded circles to give it another layer of depth uh, so yeah to me this is this is a really useful brush if you're into doing you know space scenes that's like a killer brush and you see how quick I was able to do that without even thinking about it Okay, effect brushes. These are always nice for like uh, mood lines, I call them, or you know, drama lines or whatever. Uh, so basically, these are ones where like I'll do like the thick to thin uh, kind of feathering, and I'll just kind of make them all different sizes. And I try to be a little bit messy when doing these ones because I'm trying to, you know, maybe make a scene look, I don't know, creepy or uh, dramatic or whatever. Uh, so all this is is a brush that's got a little bit more uh, texture and grit to the line. So that can be fun as well because you know you don't want every every line to be pristine. You know you want to mix it up. So then a uh, smooth brush. Now this smooth brush is is just another good inking brush, but it's got a bit of a uh, a good thick to thin and a bit of a, a rigidness to the line. So again, just it's it's a smooth shape, but it's uh. It's more like a, I don't know, it makes me feel like I'm using more of a paintbrush, you know, because you get those little inconsistencies every now and then. So that's a good one to play around with. Uh, Micron, this is a, a bit of a boring brush that, you know, is real easy to make in Photoshop, but I figured I would include it regardless because it's one of those brushes where when you're doing geometric shapes, uh, it's really important to have. You just simply click, hold shift and start dancing around your sketch or your buildings or whatever you're trying to do. So even though it's a boring brush, it's important to have. Smooth Inker, uh, this is quickly becoming one of my favorite inking brushes now. Um, and I, I included a free set on my Gumroad, um, so you'll see that in the description below, but which has got one of my uh, really f uh, other favorite inking brushes, but this one's even a, a tiny bit better. It just has a very um, clean feel to it so I don't know how to explain it other than you just got to kind of try it and see if it feels as good to you but you know this is like with no effort I'm just doing thick to thin pulls uh, always keep in mind too that a lot of this is going to be determined on your settings of your tablet as well so if you don't feel like you're getting these types of lines with the same kind of you know 
uh, way that I'm pulling them that maybe the settings in your tablet need to be adjusted as well. So please keep that in mind. But that's a really good brush. This is like a brush I'd use predominantly for doing the rest of the detail work. And it had to happen. I had to do it. I did bullet holes. I know, sounds kind of cheesy, but there you go. If you need bullet holes, there's my, my cheesy bullet holes. And they're kind of addictive. You just want to tat, 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 You know, I don't know. They're fun. Anyways, uh, let's see. What else? <clears throat> Excuse me there. All right, this one. I don't know if this one came out great, but I threw it in there anyways. It's a flame brush. I just get a lot of people ask me how to do fire, and I'm not the greatest at it, but I figured I would at least try to make a brush that made it a little bit easier. So there's a, a shape of fire, and the way that I use it is I'll just kind of do a few different size uh, variations of it so it doesn't look so uh, repetitive because it, it's going to look a little bit repetitive anyways because it's the same brush. Hit X and do a negative, and then I kind of repeat that process and just play around with it, and then I copy and move some around and delete pieces just to make it look more random. So that's just my quick fire brush. I don't know if anybody will really dig that, but I figured I'd throw it in there. The Rolling Smoke one, kind of the same thing. I didn't feel like I nailed this one. It still works, but it requires a little bit more work. The way this brush works, and I'm running out of real estate here. Um, let me add some more canvas space. Let's just bump this up with Ys to 12 to the right. Oh, <laughs> and apparently I did up and down and not left to right. Image, canvas size, width. Yeah, so I want to go 20 here. Sorry. There we go. Okay, so this one, basically the way it works is... Did I get myself a new layer? Um, you rotate around with the brush, okay? And at first it doesn't look like much of anything. But after you get the feel of it, you want to size the brush up and down as you go. Rotate in the direction that you want uh, the... Um, you're going counterclockwise every time, just so you know. And it's really just a mix of getting a feel for how the brush lands when you pull it. Every now and then you'll get one that's off. And then just mixing up the size of the shapes uh, to get kind of this billowing effect. Now, this isn't going to totally uh, make it perfect and easy for you. It's just going to get you started. So what I would suggest with a brush like this is that you do about, you know, we'll say right... Eh, hold on. Let's do a big one right there. It's also uh, related off pressure too as well. So it's it's about getting it just in the right placement. I don't want this to look too overly round and it, it is looking too round. So let me try to billow that out more. Yeah, I'm not the greatest artist at smoke anyway. So when people ask me to do it on the video, it gave me the idea, or on the channel, it gave me the idea to do this, but I'm like, I kind of need to work on that myself. But I'll grab the smooth anchor now, and then I'll just finish off the top with a couple more. Because generally the top of these billowing shapes, you kind of leave little gaps anyways. So this just kind of gets you started. And then you get in here with your detail brush. You do more of your little fill-in and shadows and try to, you know, round out the form. So again, it's not a perfect brush, but with a little bit of work and, and detailing back and forth, uh, it'll get you there quicker. So, yeah. Take it as you will. All right, another layer. And what else we got here? I uh, did the bullet holes, the fire, this all oh, the the easy bricks. I, I like this one a lot. It's just a great time saver. Uh, it does require a little bit of work, but not much. You simply hold shift, drag from left to right or right to left. Make sure you're on uh, black, not white. And then you get this little row of bricks. Now the only thing you have to do past that is make sure you're on a new layer obviously and hold alt drag up and then repeat the uh, pattern you know just line it up hit command e and i'll let you in on a little tip don't worry about making these too perfect this is plenty good enough you know i'm sure there's gonna be people that are gonna look really closely at the bricks and go oh there's these little flaws this little, it's not perfect the bricks aren't the same size you don't want the bricks the same size every time i see a, a design and all the bricks are the same size i immediately think Man, that could have looked way better. Um, you really want to chisel these up. I halfway almost made these all different sizes anyways. I may make a new brush to illustrate what I'm talking about there. But you really want them uh, kind of different sizes and, and things. So this gets you started. 
and then you come back with your smooth anchor or whatever and you start adding all the little grunge and you know chisel it up blacken some of them in you know just really grunge it up put a big shadow across it and fill some of these in so you don't want the brushes being all clean or the bricks being all clean and precise I mean not in my opinion depends on I guess what style you're after but the way I would do them I would fill all these in I'd start doing a bunch of little you know crazy little lines all over the place and but you know again it gets you started in that direction to save you time from uh you know drawing every single one of these bricks so and then keep in mind once you do get that in place let's see if I can go back a little bit once you get uh you know your bricks in place and you want a, a dimensional shot you just go edit transform distort or perspective i use distort because it gives you a, another ability to uh, pull them where perspective kind of locks it into that one perspective and you can do all these cool like distortions to it really quickly and get some uh some depth in your scene all right so what else that's our brick one um Okay, grunge brush. This is more just, I made that thing huge, but, uh, and you can see it actually looked good right across there, I think. Uh, this would be a good one right across the bricks, even. So, add a layer, um, take, you know, your grunge brush, get it to whatever size you think will look good, and just kind of uh, dab it in there. Again, it's more of a stamp than an actual brush, but it gives you a nice effect to, you know, give something some grit or grime. So, those are helpful to have and what else this one's just an abstract kind of brush but I thought the effect was really cool so I figured I'd include it in there um, it goes with the the direction of the pole a bit it does this kind of scaly looking uh, thing I don't like I said it's more abstract but again it's nice to have a variety of brushes like this that you know can just be filler sometimes so that's all this one really is. I'm not getting kind of the effect that I was looking at, looking for right there. So scale it up and down and, and play with it. But um, if you ever need like a cool space snake, uh, you got it. It's right there. So yeah, space snake. Um, and what else? I think that's about it. Oh, texture brush. Okay, so this one's nice for, again, kind of some grit and grime and a little bit of uh, spackling or texture. Um, so you could use it in areas like this. It does randomize as you're pulling it around. Uh, I wanted it to be something that didn't look so repetitive. So it moves around as you move the direction of the brush as long as your tablet supports that. So you'll notice that sometimes it's like going up and to the right, sometimes going left and down. Uh, but that's good for, you know, texturizing, rock formations, things that you just don't want everything to look uh, too clean or too um, repetitive. And then past that, I included some of these bonus brushes. There's a pencil brush here. Uh, it's really nice for just getting a regular pencil line. And texture stipple brush. This is more just like a, a noise effect to add some, some shading. It's also good for filling in a large area of... Uh, pencil work so you don't have to scribble that all in and then I included my croquel brush from my free set which keep in mind I still have a, a pretty nice free set that has been getting some good reviews so you guys are welcome to just grab that and start there and if you like them maybe want to try these whatever so yeah so I just wanted to make these available to you and I hopefully you've enjoyed this and got something from it let me know what you like what you didn't I'll try to uh, keep improving the channel as I go and more on the way real soon. So I thank you for watching. Keep drawing, keep having fun, and bye for now.